So my fellow Eagles fans, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Roy back again with another episode of the Preaching to the Birds podcast where we like to bring you the latest of breaking Eagles news as it comes to and we just like to bring you the truth, nothing but the truth, baby. So help me God. So let's get into it. Let's get into the truth, baby. All right, so we're going to talk about the good news and the bad news from the preseason game that just happened with the Patriots. But yeah, let's just get into it. So. Good news is, good news is, the DTs looked exceptional in practice. You know how I knew that? Because the DTs, our main DTs, meaning Milton Williams, Jordan Davis, and Jalen Mother Humping Carter was looking so good that they didn't even have to play in the game, baby. They didn't even have to play in the game. That's how you know that they was playing really, really good. Uh, realistically speaking... You know, I, I was really excited with what we saw with Bryce Huff. He was only in the game for a couple of minutes. He, he only played like three or four snaps, but he showed enough to the coaching staff. So they got his butt up out of there. So I was really happy to see that because realistically speaking, with Hassan Reddick gone, we need, and I mean need, Bryce Huff to take a major, major step up. This is going to be his first year playing a lot of minutes and we need him to really really come through with those minutes he's playing them both the run and the passing game all right next piece of news is that you know nolan smith got a nice little you know a little sack we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later but i gotta shout him out a little bit jeremiah trotter jr and no and nicobe dean both looked exceptional they both looked exceptional for uh linebacker play realistically though uh, you know, Nicobe Dean had a really, 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 really good game. He had a really good bounce back game. I've been really hard on Nicobe Dean. So to see him come out and really do what he had to do was really, really nice. He led the team in tackles and he, you know, had a really, really nice pursuit play where he was on a, a blitz pattern, came back and still got himself involved in the play. He's looking nice right now. He's looking nice right now. Hopefully a little kick in the pants that we all gave him. For letting Jeremiah Trotter, you know, play better than last week, gets him motivated and he gets more and more healthy and more and more confident as the season goes. Lenavante Maddox had made a huge play where he got an interception. So he's showing positional versatility, something that we love as Eagles fans, and I'm sure the Eagles coaching staff loves as well. Uh I just wish the bro. Took that thing to the house. I thought he had the lane, the alley to do it. I wish he just put it on the second gears. But, hey, man, maybe he just wanted to see his offense, you know, get out there and do some work. Maybe he just didn't want to hurt himself. And every game that he goes without getting hurt is another good game. And then, you know, Thomas Booker balled out as well. He had three tackles and a sack in the game. So that's good for him. I'm not sure if he'll make it. Just being honest, I'm not sure if he'll make it on the team. But just to see him do some work, do somebody, uh, just to see a DT do some work outside of the notable names like Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, and Marlon T is really, really great news for us. And I really like Mustafer too. I'll just throw him in there. Uh, but what we really got to talk about is Tanner McKee, the G, baby. Tanner McKee, the G, was great news. I don't understand how he is not the second string quarterback. Nick Sirianni already came out and said that, you know, Kenny Pickett is the second stream quarterback. I hate it. I honestly hate it. I know you can't stand it. The eye test really shows that Tanner McKee is better than Kenny Pickett. It's just the eye test shows you that. And I, I don't understand why our coaching staff doesn't see it. But that's not for me to really, you know, get to choose. Because if I could, you know how we would choose. All right, that's all I really got for the, the good stuff. Now let's get into the bad. All right, now it's time for the bad, you know, time for the bad and the ugly. First off, let's start with the real truth, man. Because, you know, it's the Priest and Bird podcast. We like to bring you nothing but the real truth, baby. Um, Kenny Pickett is buns. Buns, I don't know how Howard Rose is going to get him off the team. I don't know how how Rose gonna get him off the team, but he need to get him off the team. I know we gave up a six round pick or whatever for him. I don't care. I don't care. He doesn't look like it to me. You know, obviously he's only been here for a couple weeks, but bruh, 
<laughs> Bruh. I ain't seen a first round pick look this bad at quarterback in a long, long time. Obviously, he's not our first round pick. We didn't pick the Nick. But still, bro, he looked like he should have been a seventh round pick from what I've been seeing. It's crazy. Tanner McKee is vastly outperforming him. Shoot. Will Greer is vastly outperforming him. It, it's it's a stark difference. Kenny Pickett just likes to get hit in the pocket. I don't know what it is. He just stands there and gets hit, and it's disgusting to watch, especially when you see other people play better that weren't drafted or were drafted really later. Like, bro, come on now. All right, let's enough on Kenny Pickett. I don't want to, you know, beat on a dead horse. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. Next on the list is Bradbury. I don't know how Bradbury is still on the team, realistically speaking. He didn't play that bad to me, but he missed the obvious open field tackle with Jalen Polk, and he looked lost on the touchdown run uh, with Drake May. It, it was just kind of sad to see really, if we're being completely, completely honest, and that's what we like to do on this podcast. Uh, next on the list is Nolan Smith. I mean, yeah, he had a sack, but he hasn't put together, in my opinion, a great preseason in the sense of I don't see any moves. I don't see a single move other than speed to power, bro, or just trying to get around a dude, and I need to see some hand placement. Without Hassan Reddick, it can't just be Josh Sweat and Bryce Huff. It just can't. It just can't. So we got to get him involved somehow. That's why he's been getting so much playing time. I see what you're trying to do. Big fans, you I see what you're trying to do, and I like it. You're trying to get his playing time up, get him some actual reps in the game. Maybe he changes his ways, becomes better. Uh, but, yeah, man, that, those are the negatives that I really saw. Everything else was kind of cool, to be honest. We got the dub. It was, it was kind of chill. Like, we obviously probably need some more safeties because Bradbury isn't it. But, you know. That's all all the bad I really have for you. I uh, hope y'all having a great day. Hope y'all have a great weekend. If you made it to this part of the podcast, thank you uh, for watching. It means so much to me. Just being honest, it means so much to me that you guys would even spend your, your time listening to my podcast up and coming up here. I hope you guys are having a great day. Happy weekend to you. Hope you get to eat some great food, spend time with your family, all that good stuff. But that's all I got for y'all. Peace out. I appreciate this too please remember to like and subscribe baby please like and subscribe it's free it's free it don't do nothing to you it don't do nothing to you it just helps you helps your boy get out there with the algorithm and stuff i need to get the algorithm popping okay yeah i need the algorithm popping you know come on now. yeah